Greetings from Lokanya. Today we have with us uh, Shantini Datta, who has graduated uh, from doing her BLLB, and she will be sharing with her uh, um, with us the experience that she had uh, doing freelancing and other uh, related work, which she got through her network and contacts. So welcome, Shantini. Now, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Uh, we should probably start uh, by. you introducing yourself like giving out the key details okay. <laughs> yeah sure so basically i currently work as a contract drafting specialist and a legal consultant for startups and small companies primarily so um i've garnered over like 3 and a half years of experience i've been doing it since 2020 now so it has been quite a long and uh, tumultuous journey i would say <laughs> it is not a easy path but well here <laughs> i am so i'm doing an interview with you i think uh, i'm doing something right <laughs> okay hmm so can okay, uh, uh, can you just share how you started like how did you manage to get contacts and start with the or the freelancing journey yeah okay so uh, basically in the beginning my freelancing journey didn't start with law it was it started with writing with content writing basically okay and uh, it started during pandemic a lot of people were suddenly interested in social media promotion and everything and uh, i just uh, i found contacts through facebook actually a lot of people were posting like we want to hire writers for bulk writing etc and my aim at first was i want to get work because you know create a portfolio is one of the most important steps in the beginning stages so i just said yes to any project that i would get so like any industry i worked for with various industries lifestyle cosmetics bedding sheets <laughs> i've written about everything honestly so that's how i started uh, but you know once you start working with these companies and these people who put you in contact with other companies you can start pitching your services slowly and steadily like uh you know you have companies so i'm sure you always need legal help or you know you are always hiring contractors so you know you should be safeguarding yourself and maybe have an agreement in place or let me draft an agreement uh, for you that you can have with me just to showcase them and that i have these legal skills in contract drafting you know so that's how i started pitching my services so over time uh this is how i got my initial one or two clients you know like you had to pitch like 50 people maybe two people were like okay fine give me free service <laughs> nobody will be That's willing to big, pay you at first the task of like uh, getting rejections from those 48 uh, clients and still oh up my god yes another 50 <laughs> it breaks your heart every time you know like oh wow rejection okay let's move on hmm. uh but uh you need to like i would say like in your freelance career like very early on in the very early stages you should get used to say, being said no you know that is what you should learn first it's it's very easy to get a yes and get all pumped up about it but be get, like get used to people saying no to you about everything and anything whatever you might be pitching about no matter how good you are you may be a topper in a national law university it doesn't matter people will say no to you okay. get used to that first and i would say the best people the best way to get used to it is just pitching your services to as many people as you can whoever it is your friend your chacha your jeeja just say <laughs> you know this is the service i am providing do you want it they will probably say no but still you will just get used to being said no you know so you don't feel bad and you can move on faster because you need to be always on the move pitching new people talking to new people making new connections uh just to stop you here uh what should a law student in particular do as to like we are talking we are here in the legal uh, field uh so what should a law student probably do just to uh, make sure that he gets a uh, freelancing work uh, from the start like is there a particular path that one should follow or maybe a maybe some uh, channels or uh, uh, some websites through which we uh, one can get there are websites i think the websites everybody knows about it's upwork and fiverr 
uh, Fiverr is better for, you know, like um, getting small work, like $5, $10 work. It's fine. Mostly students or like very small organizations come there and they want to get their work done for cheap. But at least you can get some startups and small companies on Upwork. But the problem with these platforms is since it is so highly promoted, you know, even in India, there's a company, True Lancer, you know, these companies have been talked about so much. A lot of people are over there. So how can a fresher go there and show that, okay, I have a competitive edge over experienced people. You don't have that benefit of using those channels in the early days. Okay. So the number one step that you need to do is build your portfolio. This is the step that most students just want to skip and they want to just get into the, I'm pitching my services and getting clients that, but that doesn't happen, you know, uh, because um, let's say like uh, in your locality, somebody comes and says, oh, I'm going to give you uh, goods that you can buy from your groceries or big shops at like 50% discount and they are all good products. You go there, you go to the showroom and you see it's completely empty. There's no point, right? So you need to have things that will showcase that, oh, I have skills. So that's why number one, build your portfolio. Now you may ask, how will I build portfolio if nobody gives me work? Exactly. Give yourself the work. That's how you start. And nowadays, when you have chat GPT, ask chat GPT, uh, create a legal scenario for me based on which I can create whatever document you want to create. So let's say that I want to learn how to draft a non-disclosure agreement. Okay, it's one of the most basic things to draft. I want to draft an NDA. So ask ChatGPT, the ChatGPT give me a scenario where A company and B company want to do a business transaction and they want to draft an NDA. So ChatGPT will give you a scenario. Okay, you got your scenario, you understood. Just think that, okay, this is the client has approached me and this is the scenario they have given me. And now based on this, I have to draft an NDA. You sit down, you do your own research and you can draft an NDA. Now you're like, okay, so who is going to give me feedback? I have drafted the NDA. Who is going to tell me that is this is correct or not? That is why you need seniors. That is why you need networking and connections where you can ask somebody that, oh, you know that I have done this draft work. Could you just look into this and give me a little feedback? Is this correct? Is the format correct? Should I add anything? Should I subtract anything? And you get the gist of it. So one by one, you create one of these portfolios. Once you have a portfolio, then you can go to the channels. You can upload your work on Upwork or Fiverr or whatever and showcase people that oh, I have the skills so you can hire me. Maybe uh, number two can... that you can... yeah. Maybe... Yeah, yeah, go, go, go Maybe uh, we can just uh, put up there some samples of our draft and uh, all those things. That's what you're telling. Yeah. Yeah. Just to put yeah, it in exactly. simple ways. And yeah, just for... Yeah, 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 exactly. That's what I'm telling. Like, yeah, put up those samples. Whatever work you have done, even if it is very basic... Just put it up there. Just see, just pitch to people. That's how you start showcasing that, oh, you know, I am out there. I'm mm -hmm. here. <laughs> Take a look. So no matter how basic it is, okay. Uh, second, start a LinkedIn is one of the best pro ways to network with other people. And uh, focus on personal branding. And by LinkedIn, if you see on LinkedIn, most people just say that, um, I am good at X, Y, Z skills, so hire me. Mm. It doesn't work like that. Neither if you put up a post that, oh, you know, I have 2.5 years of experience in, uh, I don't know, mergers and acquisitions, commercial litigation, so hire me. Nobody's going to do that, okay? Because, okay, fine, you have experience and you have done work, but there are 10,000 other people who have done this also. How do I know you are the right candidate? And that's why building a personal brand is very important. And how do you do that? Whatever experience you have, whatever things you are learning, put it out in a way which showcases that you have authorization in that space. If you see my LinkedIn profile, I'm always putting out content, which is telling other people that, okay, I'm no, I know about the subject that I'm talking about. I know about contract drafting. Uh, I know about SaaS contracts. Because I am showing my credibility and authority in the space, people ask me themselves. I don't even go around pitching people my services. People come to me. Okay, so that is the best way I feel 
you have to give it time it doesn't happen in a day and neither is it going to happen overnight okay <laughs> like uh, you have to give up on those dreams of oh i'm a freelancer and in one month i'm a millionaire <laughs> that doesn't happen okay those things are just told by influencers who have themselves worked for 5 to 10 years and now they want to just sell the dream to make more money exactly so it doesn't work like that you have to put in the grit you have to keep working then you will get it and uh, did you do something else beside this while you were freelancing uh yeah i have done a lot of things oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um i like i told you i didn't start with contract drafting i started with uh, i started with writing business plans and making pitch decks for businesses and uh, i would say that i used some of my connections that i had previously i used to study in bangalore actually before i started law um and from there i had made friends so all my friends were either starting a new business or they were getting into the startup space because bangalore is all about that exactly. so i pitched to them that uh, let me just make business plans for you okay don't take my legal services let me just make your business plan uh, okay you're uh, pitching to investors let me make the pitch deck for you and all of these were free mind it i was just giving my time to make them the best quality that i could at that time and once i did that and they got either to the investment stage or to the seeding stage that is when i started talking to them okay so now that you have you know shareholders maybe you should have an agreement in place so how about i draft your shareholders agreement so you know it's it's little things that always take you to the ultimate goal your ultimate goal is i want to do contract drafting mm-hmm. but your step one can't be oh hire me because i'm an awesome yeah. contract drafter especially when you're fresher especially when you're still still starting in college you know even though you might have the skills you don't have the experience or the years to show it for right so yes you have to use your brain <laughs> like what are the other ways i can approach people <laughs> okay so you didn't uh, go through all these like fever and upwork you didn't use that you use some your some of your personal contacts and like to gain that yeah okay. yeah yeah and uh not um more than fiverr and upwork i would say facebook helped me a lot okay. facebook is a place where you get a lot of facebook bulk work people <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah people don't even realize that facebook is a how much uh, is not know? even on facebook i feel <laughs> like they're more <laughs> <on> instagram <laughs> exactly exactly right people don't realize that on facebook actually there are a lot of groups and people from all over the world are posting there about different kinds of jobs so you need to realize that your skills doesn't have to always start with legal skills okay you can have video editing skills or maybe you're just very good at using canva to make posters or some facebook ads or whatever whatever you can do i would say if you don't have those skills try learning some you know if you if we if you are in in very early stages in your career, like in college like in first year second year you have a lot of time to learn some of these things right so learn those skills and utilize different channels to pitch people those things okay and then use those network and relationships to start pitching your other services because the longer term your relationship is the more people will have uh, you know faith in you that okay you will do good work because uh a lot of time especially when i was in like fourth or fifth year when i was working most of the people who gave me work like legal work in the beginning were people that i had built you know long term relationships with i was already i probably i made them like two pitch decks for businesses or i really helped them you know develop their business strategy using the business plans so i have built this strong relationship with them already so they have the faith they okay so if i give shantini even if she does mediocre work she will not mess up so bad that everything will fall apart because she has already invested so much time in helping us with everything else so the relationships and the networks and the connections really matter and uh, talking about facebook you'll get bulk work but at low price but you cannot be thinking about price in the early stages so just take the work build the relationship understand the company what they are doing how they are doing it who is the person and over time you can start doing other things for them also you know you can use that portfolio to pitch your services to somebody else 
you know, a lot of lawyers and law firms nowadays for their websites are writing blogs, right? Or even a lot of lawyers uh, hire research assistants to write research paper for them or at least help them in academic work. So we show them that, okay, I have written on 10 other subjects before, so I can help you write this law firm blogs also because I'm a law student. So that's how you also get other clients. Not necessarily you have to be stuck on that one person. You can have other avenues also. Okay. Uh, just one more thing. Uh, suppose uh, a fresher, uh, not even fresher, maybe a fourth or fifth year student who wants to just go about drafting. So what we are taught in law colleges is not proper drafting. That's for sure. We are given a book, mug it up, do whatever you want to do and just get away with that. We just, there's no even paper. In my college, there wasn't even a paper for craft, uh, for drafting. We just had the, uh, it contract, was, right. I had contract, but contract was just the theory part. It it wasn't like you draft. Yeah, yeah. Which, which subject is your college te teaching you anything practical about? Tell <laughs> me one subject they're teaching anything practical. Specific, no, uh, right. Yeah, but uh, about drafting. So, uh, like the drafts have changed, like the formats have changed, like what it used to have in like previous years, what what were there in the books. Now it has changed. Its application has changed. We cannot write the same clause as uh, a meeting for arbitration only at Delhi, but it can be held up uh, virtually as well. Virtually also. Mm -hmm. So one can use all these platforms like chat GPT or or other sources. So how did you go about like learning drafting in particular? Uh, yeah, so um, I would say for any fresher, the best way to learn drafting is read drafts itself. One that is easily available on the internet. If you search on the internet, just write the name of uh, whatever agreement you want to have interest in. Let's yeah okay. Let's say NDA right non disclosure agreement right SEC okay this SEC dot gov dot in okay it's a US website actually mm -hmm. uh it's a government website but every kind of agreement is uploaded okay. because they have to get it registered or whatever if you just go there you will find enough template about every different kind of agreement there is out there okay X number of agreement uh even if you um, even if that seems more complicated, you can simplify it more down. Okay. You go to Amazon every day, right? You go to Flipkart every day. You probably also use Shopify every day. Okay. Open three websites on your computer and you go and read their pri uh, privacy policy. Okay. All three are e-commerce platforms. All three of them are used by people from all around the world. Read their privacy policy compare and contrast what are the things which are similar you realize the boilerplate clauses and there will always be things which are different for different companies read them and then you'll understand okay so amazon's business is like this that's why this is different or uh, flipkart's business is more concentrated in india that's why some clause is different and shopify is different okay this, this is the most easiest way to first start realizing that which clauses are boilerplate in every agreement if you understand which of those clauses are and focus your uh, you know shift your focus towards only the clauses which are different for every company you can start drafting then okay now when you start drafting everybody has this weird idea that drafting means you need to have a lot of legal jargon in it you need to add a lot of legalese it needs to be very complicated and difficult no that idea is gone, okay? Even if you hand over to a company like yesterday itself, okay? I handed a 25-page SaaS agreement to a company and the co-owner is calling me up and saying, I can't read this. It's, it's 25 pages long. It's too much information for me. <laughs> I have to sit down and persuade her that, ma'am, please, please read it because it's legal agreement. If you don't read it, you'll not understand what your risk exposures are. Nobody wants to do that, you know? It needs to be very easy to digest. Whoever is reading it will understand it. As a lawyer, your responsibility will be ensuring that, uh, like every, uh, you know, every segment of risk is being covered. 
Now you might ask like, what are these different risks that different companies can have? Do a simple Google search. Every company has a different kind of risk management, compliance management thing. All of these reports, annual reports, are published by the company themselves. What they're doing to comply with different laws, what they're doing to manage their risks. Read them. Read about the famous companies only. Once you know how the famous companies are operating, you'll understand how the smaller companies are operating too. Nothing is too different. And that is how... You start learning drafting. Okay. Simple language, but you need to know what to include and what not to include. Drafting is not about, you know, starting the sentence with whereas, herein, here forth, henceforth, nothing. You All don't need that. It's, like simple things. It's, it's limited to the school only. Outside it, it has no nothing. application at all. It has no application, nothing at all. You just need to be very picky and choosy with the words that you're writing. That's all. And how do you know which words to use? The more you read, the more you study, the more people you follow who share, uh, you know, different kinds of information about contract drafting, the more you know. I also know probably like 30% of contract drafting. I still have to reach 70 to know the rest 70%. Okay. So always, you're always learning new things. You're always getting to know new things. Keep searching, keep reading, keep researching. You'll find what to include and what not to include. That's the only thing you need to do in drafting. No, no rocket science <laughs> in it, honestly. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, this thing, uh, one needs to whether decide their niche as to like, I want to draft only contracts. I don't want to draft other things like uh, privacy policy, maybe any other things, maybe legal drafts that are used in uh, this courts as well, the writs, the petitions. So, one needs to, I think, broaden their horizon and maybe just uh, learn one thing at a time. Maybe start with contracts and then go about the petitions and all. So maybe you can... Now, you said that you have you uh, helped your friends in first uh, pitching uh, their founders and uh, their parties. Yeah. And then you moved yeah, yeah. to the uh, stage where you drafted contract for them. Now, now there might be a uh, situation where they'll need your, you as their legal advisor, maybe to draft petitions, maybe to draft writs or any other file. So maybe, yeah. so mm -hmm. one should approach, I think, step by step as to first learn, like mm -hmm. pick a thing, just grab all, whatever you can get about that thing. Use it in mm -hmm. your uh, course and then like shift to other things. See, in law, the horizon is too broad to close your doors to anything. First of all, law itself is too broad. You yeah. cannot cover anything in your in one lifetime also. So don't close your door off to anything. Don't niche down in law. Choosing law is already niching down. You're specializing in a subject already. So you niche down more. Probably there is something that you like doing and that's why you know maybe a little more, a bit more about it. Let's say that I really personally just love SaaS itself, okay, software as a service. It's very up and coming, it's trending. I am always watching SaaS videos, so I know about SaaS a little bit more. But that doesn't mean that I don't know about an e-commerce company or a manufacturing company or other things, okay. So never close off your doors. How to, drafting, pleadings, petitions, writs, I wouldn't say writs, but at least petitions, uh, one that is uh, filed in, you know, lower courts, like Sessions Court or High Court, is not that difficult to learn. Because most of the time, whatever your senior has already drafted, or you can find drafts that, you know, other parties have already drafted, you can use that, fill in your information, and your draft is ready. There's not a lot of thinking that goes into it. Okay. That's how usually most courts operate. No matter how much you try to sugarcoat it into you need to learn this. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. <laughs> so you shouldn't be closing off on uh, the aspect of I'm not going to draft petitions or court pleadings. Legal notice. You shouldn't do that. Uh, but on the other side, when it comes to... Um, you know, like choosing specific industries when you're doing contract, like commercial contract drafting, you can be a little picky and choosy over there because there are too many industries to cover. 
choose things that uh, interest you, things that you usually, um, you know, follow. Let's say that you are very interested in intellectual property. So focus on, uh, you know, drafts or commercial drafting, which are in that segment, like follow commercial drafting of, uh, I don't know, OTT platforms. You know, if you go there, you will see that they have different kinds of terms of service, terms of use. If you search on Google, you will find a lot of agreements between, uh, you know, the famous channels that you watch, Z or Star. Right. Having, uh, mm-hmm. They have agreements with, you know, other channels of, uh, you know, distributing their content. So you will find that um, those agreements, so you can focus on those IP or you can just focus on how to draft a patent, uh, um, you know, application. So you can niche down on those things, but not on overall broad horizon of law. Mm-hmm. If you do that, you're just limiting yourself, honestly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say that, you know, a lot of people think of this niching down or choosing one way because they think that, oh, if somebody comes today and tells me that, um, you know, I don't know, draft an agreement for for Amazon, I'll be like, I have never worked for Amazon. I don't know how to do it. It's a probably it's going to be a hundred page agreement. How on earth am I going to do it? They get so scared, they move away from it. Whatever work might come your way, never say no to it. Jump into it. You will face challenges, but that is when you will learn the most. Whenever you face a challenge, you start going into it because there's this pressure. I client kya sochega agar main kaam nahi de sakti. So you focus a lot more on learning. Okay, so this is how it's done. That is how it's done. So never close off to new opportunities just because you fear that I may not be able to perform to what I feel is the best. So never close yourself off on anything, honestly. <laughs> yeah, very true. Uh, do you want to add on anything like for the viewers, those who are in the college right now? <laughs> yeah. Um... When you are in college, I would say now that I'm not in college, I I want to go back to college days <laughs> because there is so much more that I want to cover, you know. Um, you, you can um, just don't come into contract drafting because uh, a lot of people have glamorized this freelance work that, oh, you can make easy money, you can earn in USD. That's not the reality. I'm not discouraging anyone. But I, but you need to come with the mindset that, yes, I'm ready to put in the work, the effort, the grit. It's going to take you three to four years. But once you have the experience and the expertise, you will be able to get to where you want. Live the freelance life, be a nomad, work in the mountains, <laughs> whatever you want to do. It will take time. And um, always network with the right people. Uh, talk to more people, pitch them or just tell them that, you know, that um, I want to do this. Let me work with you. Let me shadow you. Whatever you do, let me just follow you along. That's how you learn the most. If you always have this mentality that I need to, that uh, I'm not getting paid. What am I going to do? If you, if you always have that mentality, it, it, it might be difficult for you to learn things in the early stages. So in the early stages, always have this learning and growth mindset. So that's how you can learn from the experts. So, yeah. Okay. I think law as a, as a professional a profession itself is something, it's a freelancing thing. Like all the advocates that we see, they do not take, they do not do all the matters themselves. You come to me, mm-hmm. I know something about uh, bail, but I don't know anything about mm-hmm. contracts and stuff. So what I will do, I'll just mm-hmm. allot it to one of my friends who is mm-hmm. better at con- uh, contracts and drafting and whatever the thing is. Yeah. So it's it's a freelancing thing in totality itself. I don't think freelancing as such in totality, platforms, exactly. uh, platforms itself only. It's not limited to it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I have gone to a lot of courts and uh, I've seen there one person is very good in pleading. So... Everybody will take work themselves, but go to this person and just pitch them that, ah, please do my pleading, you know, or they will go to a senior and get their, uh, you know, pleadings drafted because he's so good in drafting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, this is is very rightly said that the law profession itself is very freelance in nature. Uh, But the one thing in law is you cannot pitch people that, uh, oh, I have the services, please hire me. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. That's why you 
very crafty in your ways of doing it exactly you need to manipulate in people's mind exactly. <laughs> not exactly manipulating but that is why i told you like start with different avenues and then tell them that you can get these agreements done hmm. so maybe i'm a in good between <laughs> uh, you can get in your work done as well <laughs> doing their things you yeah, know exactly exactly hmm. yeah so that's all do, do you want to know anything else from me you can ask ha yeah, maybe they can comment in down and you can just there uh... yeah sure sure i'll i'll come i'll come ahead and comment uh, on your channel too yeah, and if you guys want you guys can follow me i'm always i'm always giving out good good content on contract drafting a lot of people Maybe also approach just me i'll share some of the uh, sample drafts that you have made uh, i'll just put that uh, put that uh, in the description people can see from there if it's possible sample drafts uh okay i can mm, yeah i have three yes. drafts which i have consent to share <laughs> um i i will share them because you know a, a lot of the drafts uh, the companies do not give you consent to share with anybody maybe just so sample or just drafts. the templates you can that you have that you might like to share see i don't follow templates i draft some are boilerplate other than boilerplate it is uh, completely drafted by myself so i don't have any template per se it's all just my work so i will give you my work three of them that i've done you can share with your viewers purely thank you thank you you, you can reach so out much. to me on my linkedin if you have any problem i'm always helping out students they are always asking me the first question is that i want to do contract drafting how do i do it <laughs> so <laughs> always uh, answering their questions helping them find out what they actually even want to do in the first place so yeah please yeah. i i always love giving back to the legal community honestly <laughs> okay